All right, we will call the meeting to order. So first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Do we have anything that needed to be added? Um, one thing I just wanted to add was the um, a quick executive session at the end to talk about um, personnel um, merit increase. I don't think last time that we finished talking about that. Um, so if we could do one at the end, shouldn't take very long. Other than that, uh, anybody else have anything they wanted to add? Were, were we going to have any discussion, or is there any more on the BRTS? Not until um, okay. in the next week, we or two weeks, we just got the, the um, purchase and sale agreement. So I've looked it over, talked to the lawyer about it. Chris is going to eyeball it. Okay. And then I'd like to send it back to the BRTS lawyer tomorrow. And then I'm setting up a meeting with, or Victoria and I are going to meet just to kind of see what we need to do here for the end of when we're going to do the break. I'm not sure it's going to be clean at June. It may be. I think they want to try to take the employees the beginning of July and that sort of thing. But okay. um, I think some of it may just come down to timing and stuff. So hopefully mm -hmm. you will sign the purchase and sale on the 27th. Yeah, we'll probably have a little Great. better information That's, then. Yeah. yeah. So no, we're just, we, they yeah. just got it to us and we edited it and I met with Taco Bowler last week. Thank you. Okay. Just need a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Aye. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And just just before we get started, I, you know, probably everybody heard uh, last week, unfortunately, we got the sad news of Carl Russell had passed away um, late last week. Um, for anybody, I'm sure a majority of people in town know who Carl Russell was, and, you know, um, for anybody that doesn't, um, you know, Carl was, you know, pretty instrumental in, you know, the changes here at the town after Irene. Um, you know, he was one of the go-getters and get, get on the board and, you know, want to steer the town and a better direction so um, and and you know it, I mean his sheet of endeavors is very very long um, when he came to being a vital uh, community member um, he had his hand in just about everything um, if it was school related or town related or or private you know farming related or, or those types of things um, so I know for me it was an honor to be on the, the board with him for a few years um, I actually came on when the board got to five, um, which they said, you know, Bethel will never be a board of five. We'll never be able to find five people to fill those seats, you know. But uh, here we are, you know. You know, seven years later, we have five people. So, um, so yeah, I always appreciate Carl and always kind of looked up to him as a, a leader of the community, and it was, um, you know, very sad to hear the hear that news late last week. So, just wanted to throw that out there to everybody in case anybody hadn't heard. At least send his thoughts and prayers with his family and at I, this time. So I did get um, I did get um, some information that um, Kelly. Sent yeah, you. I put it in my agenda. I think it was June twenty fifth. They'll have a celebration of life yeah. Um, yeah, for Carl um, at one o'clock. So and their pastor at their their family home on Macintosh. All right. So we have uh, we have two appointments this evening. Uh, the first one is Cecil. So um, Cecil re representing the um, cemetery commission, um, and uh, you know we had uh, a couple a couple of things this year that we've been trying to update at the cemetery. One was um, at one point was the, the plots and the pricing of the plots and kind of kind of a lot of the same things that we've done with a lot of pieces of the town is a lot of our policies and cost structures were really outdated and didn't match existing towns and things like that. So we had uh, the first phase of it was going through, um, you know, looking at the plots and, you know, the pricing of the plots and things like that that we took care of a couple of meetings ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And then the second one is just kind of the the upkeep of the cemetery. And, you know, I, I think that... Sure. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So you know, I, I think. I, I really well, hold on, hold on. We'll, we'll everybody will have plenty of time to talk. We'll just. Um, so for anybody that doesn't know, Cecil Washburn is our cemetery commission, and 
And uh, for anybody that's on any type of committee or commissioner of something, is it's uh, basically a volunteer, you know, volunteer. You, uh, it's all your own time to to do this endeavor. Uh, does not come with a, you know, comes with a budget, but uh, you know, your time is not budgeted in that time. So, um, so I, it, so the next piece of of this was, um, you know, Cecil had brought up in regards to the um, artificial flowers. Um, at the cemetery in regards to the upkeep and you know um, and how can we make the cemetery um, easier to work work in and around um, so this is kind of where we had come to that so I I don't know who do you want to start or Cecil so, want to start or I can say the um, so Cecil when I talked about it and of course you have the plastic flowers some people are obviously very good about putting artificial flowers up and taking care of them and put them down and a lot of people aren't and they leave them there and they fade and they fall over and then we're dealing with them getting caught in weed whackers and mowers and there's a whole becomes a whole maintenance issue and we did rebid the cemeteries this year and it's getting harder and harder to find companies that will actually bid on maintaining cemeteries because it's so much work weed whacking around all the stones and and all that and we looked at other cemeteries nearby and no, a lot of them have the same signage which says no plastic flowers. We interpreted the cemetery um, rules to say that, you know, to give us the authority to say that the, that the flowers, you know, just didn't need to be placed there. So put a sign up, said no artificial flowers, and then, um, and at the time there weren't any, and then all of, after the signs were placed, a lot of artificial flowers were came up. I asked Cecil to um, hang on to them so we have them at the town office so that if anyone, you know, could spend significant money on these, we had them so we could return them to their rightful owner. I know some people were, um, we received a couple calls and people were upset that we hadn't notified people, but we don't have a list of addresses and who owns the plot, it sounds crazy, but we don't, a list of who owns the plots and how to reach people. So um, that so that certainly was, um, and we had talked about it, and so certainly that is something that if we'd had, we should have done, but we didn't have a list So um, to contact people. So yes, we did receive a couple calls about people that were upset that flowers were taken down or not allowed anymore. Um, the cemetery rules are clear. People can plant bushes. They can plant bushes or, and, or shrubs and trees with permission of the cemetery commissioner. They can plant real flowers. You can put flower, real flowers in a vase and things like that that have been done there in the past. And, um, but for us, it was just really became a maintenance issue because although while some people are excellent about taking them down, a lot of people just leave them and then it becomes a nuisance. So. Anyway, so people had called and asked if maybe uh, I spoke to Mrs. Hart, and of course, could we do some sort of a, <clears throat> a change, like have put them up at a certain time and take them down? But that's kind of hard because that, that's the maintenance cycle of the, that's when they're the biggest nuisance because it's, that's when we're in the maintenance mode of the uh, taking care of weeding and mowing and stuff, the, the cemeteries. So. So what I'd like to do so that everybody does have an opportunity to speak um, on the item is, is first have a discussion amongst the board and then and then after then then we'll field questions so everybody has it and um, so I kind of you know not really knowing much about cemeteries I just started doing my homework um, so I, I looked at I looked at like a lot of the neighboring towns you know in around four or five or six neighboring you know, out towns like Hartford or Windsor or Royalton or Rochester, and you know, of course, some of them are tough because you know they're all maybe cared for under a different identity. So trying to figure out a web page isn't always easiest. So, <laughs> um, what, what I did find um, is, it, for the most part, it, on every place it comes down to three options. Um, by far, a majority of the cemeteries, it just states that that no artificial flowers are allowed. Um, and then, then there's a toss up between some cemeteries will we'll talk about that you can have artificial flowers, but you can't have them during a certain time period, what they call the growing season. So that's usually like May to September. That doesn't make sense. I, I, I'm just telling what's out there. So if it makes sense or not, I'm telling you, it, these are things that you can go out there very easily and go knock and, and find them. And then, 
and then the other ones just don't allow it pure. Uh, I'm sorry. Or the other ones are like Bethel currently, where, um, where it just talks about um, our policy is um, to be removed by the cemetery property whenever it becomes unsightly. So, and then I guess, you know, then, then the definition would. And then I think at that point it depends, you know, that, you know, the definition of that and what it means to each person is probably a little different, right? So I, I think what we're trying to do is, I think the goal for all of us is to, you know, want to, um, you know, remember our loved ones that have passed away. But at the same time, we have to understand that this gentleman sp spends all his free time to do, to do this. So how do we best make it work for everybody? And I think the challenge that we have currently is with the artificial flowers, we have two challenges. The first challenge is the growing season and the mowing season, right? So w when, you know, as Paul knows, when we get to mow the cemeteries, that there's, there's a lot of the smaller work that has to be done. So there's not a lot of people that want to do that work. And then the second piece is what happens to the flowers you know, I'll just make, you know, let's say relatives from Connecticut come up to visit somebody's gravesite, right, and they leave flowers not to return again, who maintains those, right? If, if the next week there's a, a storm and they blow around the cemetery, what happens to those, right? And the, and the thing is, is poor Cecil's got to go out there and take care of all that. Um, Cecil is getting paid to take care of the cemetery, but well, that, my I'll, flowers hold on, hold on. I put... No, no. No, no, we're not going to interrupt tonight. So we are going to talk as a board. Okay. And then I will give you guys all the time in the world to I'll talk afterwards. <laughs> so we have to remember, Cecil gets $600 a year. No, five. $500 a year. <laughs> for, for 12 months at, you know, 10, 12 hours a week of work. So that is probably, what, 10 cents an hour. So <laughs> we got to think, think about this when we're putting this into perspective for, for him. Unless we have hand sign, anybody else wants to be a cemetery. And go through that. That would be helpful. So, um, so at the board level, I mean, what does the board feel in regards to the the current the current um, policy, which is you know unsightly versus the you know elimination of of artificial flowers. The only, the only other experience I've had is where my folks are cemetery. My folks are down in Rhode Island. And they don't allow plastic flowers. They do allow potted flowers. They don't allow shrubs and trees, anything like that. But there's a defined time period. Because they know, especially around the holidays, like Memorial Day and, and they, you know, dates like that, there's going to be an abundance of flowers and flags. You know, the BFW comes in and puts flags on all the veterans. Um, sites, but then they they have a certain time period that that happens, and it's posted that everything is going to be removed by such and such a date. Mm -hmm. So, but but plastic flowers are not allowed. This is a big cemetery. This mm -hmm. is a, this is yeah. You take all the Bethel cemeteries and put them together, and it's probably half the size of this one. I mean, it's just the work involved. It's it's the work. It's the hours of cutting in around. The, the markers and uh, <coughs> that has a big impact on it. What, any idea of a percentage of, or just a big guess, how many graves have grave markers that stand up versus that are flat on the ground? Uh, probably well, more more I vertical than I don't know. The reason I ask is because hey. the ones that are flat, you could mow over, you don't have to, you could mow right. over. Well, you still got to trim around. Unless, well. On the inside. Um, well, but even those probably usually have some sort of a way for a container to be kind of screwed into. If, so the question is, could we have those flowers, but not on the ground, but in a holder, attaches to the headstone, which would handle the, uh, and for a period of time, taken down after X number, X period of days, or whatever, uh, that, would, that would allow people to do that without it being 
a maintenance issue. I mean, I'm, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it'd still be a maintenance issue if someone has to clean it up, and I'm not sure the cemetery couldn't afford the cost of installing those sorts, those, um, if they even could be installed into all the stones. They certainly couldn't, the cemetery fund could not, or the town, eat the cost of installing all of those. It would be, it would be, we'd have to, it'd be so expensive. You'd, you'd have to hire someone to do it. Because obviously the thing is, we have no staff for the cemeteries. We pay for the two contractors to mow them, and then and Cecil digs the graves and does the maintenance and trims the trees and does the fence, you know, all that. But other than that, that's it, you know. So to additional maintenance, and, and not to mention, like, the, the cost. Right. there's just no money for that. Any, any other thoughts at the board level? Or? I mean, I know the only one that I'm familiar with is my grandparents are buried in the same cemetery in Windsor, and. I know when we go once a year, we plant flowers at the grave site because they don't don't allow any any type of artificial flower or baskets or anything else. So it has to be um, has to be something you plant um, or 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 bring in real flowers to put near the grave site that can be biodegradable or whatever. But so I, that's my only experience really. Do we want to open it up for questions? I know there's one lady that's ready for some questions. <laughs> <laughs> because they were taken off of my mother's father. Make sure she says her name. Would you speak? Please give your name. Okay. The person taking the minutes does not know who you are and cannot see you. I think they know me. <laughs> no, they don't. The person taking the minutes is not here tonight. So please. Uh, the, the person taking the minutes is taking them remotely. She cannot see you. She cannot. She can hear you. Right. But I need, we need to know for the record who you are. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. I'm Barbara Hart. I live on River Street. I have family. And I, my family, my uncle, un uncles, cousins, my mom and dad have been there for years. And we've never had any problems with my flowers. When I put them up there, I don't put them out in the middle of it. I put them right beside of the gravestone. Now, I don't understand how, when we own lots, plots up there, that we're not allowed to put things on those plots without getting an argument about it. I can understand. Maybe some of them are unsightly, but the flowers we put there, as it says in your bylaws, are not unsightly flowers. They're, they're pretty flowers. Maybe they'll fade in a while, but I have a cousin that goes up there and takes them off in our graves and all of my registered relatives' graves, at least by October before snow falls. And I think that if you have, if you put a, uh, you could put in your bylaws or somewhere, that they have to put, if they put them on there, they have to have them off by a certain time. I mean, once a year, we just, we put the flowers, we honor our people up there, vet, veterans, families, mothers and fathers. My mother and father have been there for years, years. And, and this has never come up before. So why now? All of a sudden, we can't do this anymore. So before I farm the, the next question, Cecil, what, so right now with the, um, with the artificial flowers, what, what are the big issues that we're having? Oh, or, well, or, or like Barbara said, anything that might have changed over the years that you're experiencing? One of the things, about eight or ten years ago, we tried allowing people to put them on and they would be responsible for picking them up. And it never has happened. Yeah, so they're there. They put them on the first part of the summer. They're there until the next year. And they're unsightly. They make a mess. And personally, I think anybody that's buried in a cemetery ought to have a decent looking cemetery. And as uh -huh. far as I'm concerned, plastic flowers are unsighted. They fade. 
and somebody has to clean them up. But the unsightly, he thinks, is unsightly, is not unsightly. <clears throat> I'll tell you what's unsightly is the sign sitting in the middle of, of that, of our telling us that we can't have flowers up there. I think what, I think what we mean unsightly is not necessarily the artificial flowers themselves. It's he just said plastic flowers are unsightly. No, I think what he means is the period of time in which they are. So, so you had, I think you had it perfect there, Barbara, where, you know, if everybody could put flowers at the grave site during a certain time of the year and be responsible for picking those up, right, or doing the maintenance around that plot, we probably wouldn't have any of these can issues, I say right? Something? You yes. sure can. This whole line. And I, so I think that's where he's getting at. Is I don't think he's saying that. And you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think he's saying that that the artificial flowers themselves are unsightly. I think it's the period of time in which that nobody picks them up, then they're there in the spring from the winter, or they're there in the late fall. You know, it, it, you know they get weathered, right? Anything ever get you know they get weathered and faded from being out there. Someone didn't pick them up. I think is what he's saying. So. My Just, name is Vivian Castle, and I do have a lot of relatives up there. My husband, my uncle, and I. My sister, my brother, and you know, he said the plastic flowers are unsightly. That's what he said. He did say it. And a while back, a few years ago, it was that we could put the flowers on there, but they had to be off by September. Right. Yeah. And that never happened. It did in we some did. cases. It Don't did. say it, it never happened. happened. No. We did then take How come off. every year I've had to pick up a whole bunch off all the graves? But you said they were unsightly. What? You said they were unsightly. Okay. So I just want to make sure we have, you know, we have a constructive um, opportunity for everybody to talk and we'll keep things civil. And who um, gave him permission to do this anyway? I, my question is, who paid for this? So make sure you state your name. And oh, I'm sorry. My name is Elizabeth Bridge. I have a sister-in-law. I have my dad up there. I have family members up there. And I'd like to know who paid for the signs to be put up. Did Calvary. the town pay for it? Yes, they did. Oh, text So the that. town lied then when they told us they didn't know nothing about it. What? The I town lied. Text because when we called, they were told, June was told, was they knew told. nothing about it. I think it would be best if we all spoke to the chair. Right. Address the chair and be recognized by the chair before you speak, please. Well, I, know, I know the town knows of the decision because we're accepting the, currently we're accepting the flowers and trying to find a home for the flowers. But so, it's, so not, it's not fair because you guys have put a sign up that Cecil himself said, and I quote from June, no one told him he could. He did it on his own. What's going on? No, Cecil came in and he and I talked about it. And I got the wording from another sign that we saw in Brookfield, uh, looked at the rules, and, it, and the, the, as a cemetery commissioner, he has you know, the authority to make the rule, some of the rules at the cemetery. He had a very logical argument. So I, I agreed with him and thought that it made the sense in, in uh, his argument and looking at the rules. And so we ordered the signs. And I'm not sure who you spoke to. I don't know why anyone in the office wouldn't have known um, unless maybe it was the town clerk because the manager side was ordering the sign. So I apologize if someone misspoke. But, but what he said was no one gave him permission. He did it on his own. Well, he is the cemetery commissioner, and with that becomes statutory authority. So in other words, Cecil runs the town, not the town. That's what you're telling us? No, just no. the cemetery. <laughs> And I wouldn't say he necessarily did everything himself. I mean, there was communication to the town and what she was conveying but, what he'd like to do. Yeah. Now, Excuse Cecil put the sign up. That didn't mean that the town didn't know the sign was not, you know, not going up. But I can, as someone who has family up there, I can honestly tell you that my brother goes up and so do I, and we take care of June's, we take care of Vivian's, we take care of ours, we take care of everyone that we have in the family. Those flowers come off in the fall. We bring them home and dispose of them. We do not leave anything up there. Right. Uh, and I, I'm sure that I'm probably all the families that are here tonight probably do the same. Oh. You know. But if 
the taxpayers had to pay for the signs, shouldn't we at least had a meeting so that the taxpayers knew what was going on and why it was going on be before? I mean, our taxes are high enough without little things like this going on, you know. I mean, to me, telling someone they can't put flowers on a graveside is something that the families should have a right to know about. The families that have owned, we own the plots. I know the town does take care of it and own the cemetery, but we own the plots and we're, you're telling us that we don't have any say in what we can do on those lots. As a matter of fact, my lot was sold twice. <laughs> yeah. And so, but I mean, we got to, we should know. We should have known what was going to happen because those are our lots and we have been for years, as I said. It's been years. My family, my mom and dad have been there for years. They've been there for years. They passed away young and they've been there for a lot of years and there's never been any problems with us putting with that. They love flowers. I'm looking back and, it, and it's hard to know what, all I can see in here about it, it just says all lots shall be sold with provisions for perpetual care and immediate placement of corner markers and, and obviously the rules. But when people, because obviously your family and everybody bought them at different times, I can just go back. It looks like they had effective, they started with their rules in like 1988. So um, the... Uh, so it that's all so what it does talk about is yes that that when you buy the lot but they're sold with the provisions for perpetual care and and placement of cornerstones and it did does give other rules and regulations about about um you know vaults and liners and that sort of thing but um but it's um so just so you know so but yes what i'm saying bought, but is that yes, we should have known what was being planned before we walked went up there to try to put flowers on there and we see this big sign. I mean. So just to clarify, flowers are allowed if they're live flowers. Yep, and trees and shrubs Not, are allowed with permission from the so commissioner. Is, I just want to clarify this because you were, you were very specifically saying that flowers are not allowed and that's not true. Flowers are allowed, just not, we're, we're having a discussion specifically about artificial flowers only. Right. We're not discussing flowers overall for specific, you know, like I think you mentioned it, but the BMW putting flags on them. I know there's markers for the different floors. But how many, now he said he went by cemeteries, but how many cemeteries that put artificial flowers on and don't have real flowers on them? Now, it, the remark was made that everybody said how the cemetery looks so much better without any flowers on them. Well, the people I have talked to, and I've talked to a lot since this began, they wonder why we haven't got our flowers up there. Why the cemetery is so bare during Memorial Day? And that's altogether a different story. My so. question is, would you be willing to put real flowers up there for the season? I can't do that myself. I'm 90 years old, and I live alone. But you also mentioned that you have a cousin who does help you. I can't depend upon problems. people just... They were. I'd like to hear from the woman in the front who's been waving your hand. Oh, good. Sometime. That's Please. a good. I'm Go Janice. For it. I'm Janice Hunter, and I am really surprised how insensitive the town has been to these ladies' concern, and especially you. I, I just cannot believe it. That's what a cemetery is for, for people to go and pay homage to the people that have passed away. And if people can afford only plastic flowers, then that's what they should be able to be put there. I, I'm really surprised at you, Cecil. I think I think the one thing I just want to get out there again, and and, and I know that you know this is an emotional topic, and, and and we have the rights to our own opinions, but we also have to look at, you know, I went into this with complete open eyes, right? I I don't, other than I have my grandparents that are in one cemetery. I have no knowledge of any of the cemetery stuff. And I started looking this past week, and, and unbeknownst to me, that there are a majority, and when I say majority, so over 50% of the cemeteries that do not accept any artificial flowers. None. So, so that there should so, be some, hold on. Kind, so it, some kind of rule. But what I'm saying right now is 
Janice, is you have the right to your opinion, just like we all do here. But to personally attack Cecil, oh, wait, over something that a majority of cemeteries in the area are not allowing anymore. So are, are the majority of cemeteries in the area being insensitive to everybody? I think I'm just that saying, we're, this isn't like Bethel has decided that we're going to be the first cemetery to outlaw artificial flowers. And that's the way it sounds here, and it's not. So I just I, wanted to, wait, hold on, I just want to put it in perspective that a majority of cemeteries do not allow artificial flowers right now, period. I think instead of putting up a sign first, a letter should, go, should have gone out to people who own the plot. We should have known. They should have been consulted. I think that it's very, very insensitive. That's what cemeteries are for, to go right. and pay and, homage uh, yes, we to stated, the loved we, ones. Yeah, we did not have a, we don't have a list of who was cemetery. But I will say this, we were, I should have, I should have put a notice in the newspaper. Yes. I totally should have done that. And I also want to say is, the people sitting here are the exception, not the rule. You all go in and maintain, but it's, it's, this isn't about you, this is about all the other people that don't do what you take the care and time to do. After Memorial Day, there was a whole bunch of flowers placed up there, and of course we've talked to people and tried to return them to people who wanted them, and, um, but there's so many people we haven't even heard from and we have all of these flowers, and of course we're hanging on to them. But um, so yes, I take full responsibility. I should have put a notice in the newspaper. That is completely on me because we don't have a way to notify you individually. Well, so. if these people take care of things and the other people do not, yeah. then their flowers should be thrown out. Okay, after a certain period of time. But just putting a sign up. You know, no more this, no more that, without consulting the people whose loved ones are there. Yeah. As not, we said, there's right. no way to Very consult because there's there's no way to consult because there's no list of who owns them. So well, there should be a but, list, shouldn't there? Well, that's what I thought, but I thought there was one. But right, and you're and you're definitely right there, Janice. I mean, that that is a, a piece of it that you know we could revert back a month from now. The, the better procedure would have been to put out some, so, some sort of notice. This is very upsetting right. to these people. Absolutely. Sure. Very upsetting. So two, two things very quickly. The owner of the plot where my mother, or my mother and father are <coughs> buried is my mother and father. They are the ones, and I am not aware of any deed or parcel that came, was handed down to any of the children saying that we now own that lot. That's why we have perpetual care. It is not possible to determine who currently owns uh, all of those plots. So I public notice, I agree. I also agree um, that to use the line we have in the policy that says they are excited is uh, perhaps misleading and, 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 I, and perhaps could be called insensitive. Uh, and I, but so I do think that it would be appropriate for us to clarify our, what we need, to, clear, to have for the policy to which specifically address artificial flowers. Uh, I, I think that that's appropriate. Uh, a, a time limit, or if, if, they're, if it's not cleaned well, up, they will be disposed of. Well, it, all, so all of that is something that we as a select board can do uh, in terms of the policy itself. Uh, the, the, the question still remains, uh, that there is a maintenance issue. We have all agreed perpetual care. And that involves the mowing, the trimming, and, and the disposal for people who don't follow the rules. All of that becomes a maintenance issue, and that's part of perpetual care. When, when 
memorials or that you give provided Memorial Day are not taken care of by the people who place them, whoever that is. That they become unsightly over time, and that makes the entire cemetery less appealing for all people. Well, you're talking about, are you talking about just plastic flowers? Because she had said that fresh flowers or plants well, or whatever. I am specifically talking, well, I'm talking about. Because they die too, and they become unsightly. My, Fresh flowers die, and they can they die into the cult into the soil. So they are not the the, the issue that no, no. the, the art, artificial say, flowers are. I'm, I'm, if you bring a bouquet, if somebody comes to visit their grandmother, and they bring a bouquet and they lay it um, by the uh, tombstone. Um, that's going to decay. So there should be definite rules on fresh flowers. I mean, if you plant a little bush or begonias or something like that, and that's, that's a different story. That's provided for in the current right. policy. But, you know, fresh flowers, there should be a, a policy for fresh flowers and for plastic flowers. But it should certainly be uh, put in a notice of some sort so that everybody doesn't get upset. It's not right for them to get so upset. Let me think about this. So, so typically, there's the difference between like having an appointment tonight. So this is done under an appointment um, to the board versus if it's, a, if it's a scheduled board event, then we can take things like take action on it, change the policy, not change the policy. You know what I mean, Janice? Mm -hmm. So what do we think about this? Or why don't we move this to, a, um, to an agenda item for the next board meeting? This two weeks will allow the opportunity for the public to comment back to Therese on this is what we would like to see, or maybe this is a compromise that we could probably get to. Cecil could have his buy-in as well, and we can take all those notes before the board in two weeks, and we can have what we would call like a hearing on it, and then we could take action if need be, if we want to change any of the current cemetery bylaws. Because um, the only reason why I say that is because when we do appointments, so we schedule this appointment, there's like 15, 20 minutes, and then we have another appointment that's waiting, so I just don't want to keep our other appointments, that's all. So, Mary, I'll just go with you because you haven't talked yet. Yes, um, um, I think there's one more elephant in the room. Some people cannot afford fresh water. Okay. So, that needs to be a consideration. Yeah. May I ask, um, I know for a fact because I grew up with my brother. How often do they trim around the stones? My my understanding was it's only once or twice a year. My brother and I go up with a weed whacker and we do our own trimming. We remove our flowers, we do the trimming, and we put them back. Name? Oh, Elizabeth Bridge, I'm sorry. So I'm I'm curious as to this whole weed whacking thing because my understanding was that it was from what I heard from people that it's only done a couple times a year so as far as weed whacking and sending things flying why is that happening? Well, I think again I think when we get back to the artificial flowers it's a, it's, a, it's not just weed whacking or mowing it's what happens when they blow over or, or nobody picks them up at the end of the year and, and I think the thing that we're trying to get back to is you know, we don't have a full-time person that's out there to do that, right? We have basically a volunteer that's out there volunteering their time to to do various functions, right? And then the so rest of the I functions are... I volunteer to go up there once a month, I'll pick up any flowers that aren't any good, I'll dispose of them. I'll do it. I don't have a problem with doing it. But so, I don't see why you can't put artificial flowers up. So why don't we... The, I should answer the question, sorry, the mowing, is we do pay uh, the bid is, and they mow and trim weekly, you know, the cemeteries. So they are trimmed every week and they're well, mowed like Of course, when it gets now. to in August, sometimes, of course, if it's the grass hasn't grown or it's burnt down or something, then no. But no, we have um, SNS, Lawn Care does Cherry Hill, 
Well, as SNS do Cherry Hill? SNS. Yeah, yes. it does Cherry yes. Hill, and then Harold Hooker does East Bethel and Fairview. And, um, and he trims every week. And he yep. trims every week, yep. And um, Gilead, um, and, and all the other ones anyways are cared for. I'm not sure what cemetery in particular you mean, uh, or referring to, but but they those cemeteries in particular are I'm both. referring to the one right here in town. Yeah, it the Fairview. Yeah, yeah Fairview. it gets it gets mowed right. and trimmed every week. I got news for you. No, all right. Okay, uh, well, we just yeah we just took. Well, it's kind of his word against mine. No, no, no! I get the bill from the contractor. It's nobody's word against anybody's okay. word. I'll I'll go out and take beat because we um that was the contract. It was very specific about how many mowings and and everything. So so I will go out. <laughs> You tell us to plant flowers up there. You know what? What does he do? He mows over the top of it. So I, I think we probably could go on and on yeah, in regards to So what I'm suggesting is because it's, it was an appointment tonight, so we don't have a lot of time for the appointment is, and this gives the opportunity for us to go home, think about, you know, can we meet in the middle somewhere? Can we not? You know, I, I think right now it sounds like that the cemetery commission would like to go to no artificial flowers and change the um, change the the current policy. That's what I'm afraid is going to happen. But, but I'm saying this gives you it's going to be changed. In right. It gives you the opportunity. It gives you the opportunity to <laughs> to send um, your information to Therese to talk about. And we'll also have minutes from tonight, so all sure. of your comments will be on record, and they'll the select board will get all of your comments. Can I ask you one more question? So, do you have addresses of all the people that live in Bethel? All of oh, the addresses. The people that live in Bethel? No. You have the addresses of people that are taxpayers in that that live in Bethel? You send out tax? Tax bills, yes, ma'am. So, send them all a notice that there's going to be a meeting. That this next select board meeting, and this is what it's going to be, they need to be notified. Well, we, everybody will be properly warned. Um, under the meeting laws, so they're posted at three locations. Uh, we can put out a Facebook um, front post, porch um, front porch forum, yep. or, or any other publication if you can think of, you know, the something Herald. that people are the using. Herald. The Herald. The um, Herald. And then I'll help get the word out. <laughs> and then this will give the, some opportunity because maybe there are some individuals that couldn't make it tonight, or you know, usually we don't take business up on, you know, we don't make any changes or anything. It's just more of a hearing to talk about something. Um, where next time maybe we could do, you know, take up business to change something or keep it the same or find, you know, something in the middle. So um, uh, I have one question. He was talking about how no one really owned their lot. How come we have deeds to that lot? If we and we have to pay for that lot. I was sharing my personal experience. Oh, I'm sorry. My okay. parents right. bought the lots in which they are interred. Right. Now, I don't know that those, the deeds for those lots were ever passed down to the heirs. As far as I know, the people who own that lot are deceased. Right, but they're still so, your but, relatives. But they also paid for perpetual care right. in that cemetery. And they are that cemetery is providing perpetual care, right. but as ter and as far as the ownership of the lot, I don't think that it's uh, possible for us to contact the oh, current no. owners no. of all of the lots in all of the cemeteries. That's logical, but this family, this family that belong to them, people that are in that lot. Well, but we yeah. don't know. We don't know who the family are. Yeah. We no. I, I've conducted many, many, many funerals, and I doubt, and I don't believe that the cemetery, in those cases, has a list of all of the family members who may have attended that graveside service. It just doesn't happen. You're, I'm a preacher. I have conducted funerals, and I don't know of any funeral director, 
any funeral that I've ever conducted where there was a please sign here so we can contact you in 50 years if something needs to happen with the cemetery. It doesn't happen. That family name is on that story. The family name is on it, but that doesn't... Well, I disagree <coughs> with you 100%. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, but my sister last name is not the same as the family the name. name that's on the tombstone. They're not going to contact her. So, and, and it's okay. We, we don't have to, we can agree not to agree, right? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so what we're saying is right now is we can talk all night about this. Sarah will probably be pretty unhappy because she's, she was supposed to start like 20 minutes ago. However, what we can do is because we wouldn't normally do it, we wouldn't conduct or take on any business anyway, so we won't make a decision on it anyways. Uh, but what we can do is we will put it as a board item um, for the meeting at the end of June. And that will give everybody enough time and we will try to warn it as best that we can so that anybody ha can provide feedback um, and attend the meeting that night. Does that sound fair to everybody? And, and there'll be a Zoom link so if people can't come in person, they can attend sure. via Zoom too. And we put that in the notice. So, so and, I, and I apologize, we don't have more time. And, and you know, it, it's definitely a topic that deserves more time. Um, but, and we would like to, you know, carry on the conversation and hopefully be um, constructive with a, a result next time. Does that sound fair? All right. Well, I thank you for anybody that came in regards to the cemetery discussion. Um, and I'm sure Cecil will be more than happy to have people that would like to help. Um, you know, it is a volunteer position, and I'm sure the more help, the better. Um, they were just so disgusted about it. That <laughs> they were very upset, let's yeah. put it that way. And, and I know we, we do have the, the what we call the hybrid model, so you can go on the internet and you can log in that way. And I know, you know, you know some people are better with the internet than others, but we, there is an option if, if you can't physically make it um, to do that. You can also call in, correct? Um, yep, they could call, well, So, yeah, so even if you the, can't, even if you don't know how to do it through your computer, there is a call in number, right? There is, you could also send an email to myself or Kelly that we could put into the select board packet so they can read your, yep. you know, but, and like I said, all this, great conversation is going to be in the minutes. So right. the select board is already going to heard from you. So they're going to have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, have all of your input as well too. So if you, um, so they'll already have that from the minutes. So if you can attend the meeting, they already know your opinion and it'll be in the minutes that will be in their packet. So. And what's unique about that is a family member in make it up Connecticut could call into the meeting to voice their opinion at that, which normally, you know, somebody probably wouldn't drive four hours up to Bethel. Right? Mm -hmm. So, it is kind of a neat, neat feature that we have now. Now, so. well, it's two minutes, Well, that's even farther. Yeah. So, it, I mean, so there is that option, you know, to talk amongst your family too, um, because again, like Jean was saying, the, the town has no way of knowing who all the branches of the family are to 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 quantify a a discussion. Yeah before this without telling us that we can't put flowers on our loved one's grave oh. once a year, yep. for a, even if it's until September. But that there's got to be a solution. It can't be a solution that says, no, that's it. We've done it and you're all done. And so, so the best way for us to come to a solution at the next board meeting okay. is if we can get feedback prior to the meeting, because when we, when the, when the board's able to get all the information ahead of time, then we can start to look at all sides of the story. So if there's, I'm just making up, there's 10 different things that people are looking at, then the board members can look at that material ahead of time so that we can be um, prepared for that. Where if you wait until the meeting to spring it on, then, then it becomes something that maybe we didn't have a chance to, to, um, to research or, you know, to look further into. Because we would like to make, ac you know, do action on it. So. Um, so I would just uh, invite everybody to make sure they provide feedback to Therese here. Um, yeah, or Kelly or whatever or, works for yeah. you. And the next meeting is when? The 27th, right? 27th. Yeah, the 27th. 27th. Yep. Does that sound good? 
Well, suggestion is you might also write a letter to the editor of Herald uh, inviting people to uh, to submit some comments. Oh, I'll get the word out. So uh, that's, a, that's a way to reach many, many, many people. Well, when I, when I called her at the town clerk's office, she said I wasn't the only one that had called in. She had gotten many calls. That's correct. Yep. And, and so mm -hmm. we have those comments. We have your comments. We'll, well, we'll move forward. You won't have the ones that called in because when I called Pam and asked her if I could have the names of the people that called in, and she said she didn't know them because she didn't keep track of them. So. That's true. That's exactly what she said. She said, and then she said that you said, oh, I should have asked you to do that. And, and she had thought, she recognized your voice. And, and I talked to Mr. Isham, Grant Isham. I talked to, to him and uh, had his note. And, and um, so I had spoken with him as well. So I do think that, um, so some people, but if they called Pam or right. maybe Dietrich, I'm, I'm not sure, maybe Dietrich has a list. She just was out today. So, of course, my name's Elizabeth Bridge, but my concern is the whole issue with supposedly the town didn't know. Cecil claims he did this on his own, but yet you guys are saying that you did know. So, yeah, I we I, I knew, and um, were you? But you acted like you didn't know. Right. No, I, I said I knew from the get go. I'm not sure you talked to me on the phone. There are four or women that answer the phone there. I know you. I know I talked to you. I, I certainly yeah, you, you knew. You answered and you told me uh, who it was, and I, I, I knew it to because you then. we yeah. And I know Dietrich talked to you, Mrs. Hart, and I yeah. think that maybe Kelly did. I called you back, um, but yes, I I knew. I knew, and I and I said I knew, and and and. Um, so, but I'm not sure if, if you spoke to me, then I would have said I knew because I knew. And, um, but at Kelly, or uh, excuse me, Pam may not have, and Dietrich probably certainly didn't know. Right. Uh, she does pool lessons and does the book. So, it, it, you know, unless you talk to Judy, so I'm not sure. But um, no, I, I certainly knew because Cecil and I talked, and I took the picture of a sign that was similar at another grave and, and looked at it with him. So. And someone knew that the one the flowers that were taken off of my mom and dad's because they sent them home by Richard. Yes, my because they were labeled with your name on them. Oh, so. But who put the name on? I mean, Cecil. Oh, he when he, he picked did. them up off the. A lot of them. Yeah. Off a lot of them, he put the name on so that we could. So that we could. All right, let's go, guys. I'm done here. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, we'll, we'll get the word out. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I do think there's a solution other than just telling us we can't have them. Yeah. All right. Thank you for coming, Barbara. Okay. Take care. I will be here next time. Okay. I might as well go to. Okay. Thanks, Janice. Yeah. See you later. Thank you, Janice. What? You have people buried up in Bethel Cemetery? No, but I, I'm a taxpayer, and those are my friends. And when they get upset, I get upset. OK? Just checking. Yeah, well, All that's right, so we're gonna get what it is. Forward here. Thanks, Jana. Uh, so we have our other appointment, um, which Sarah is here to talk. Thanks, Cecil. Thank you. Have a good evening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's still sunlight out there. So welcome. All right, the floor is yours. Yeah, so sorry for the delay. I know you have plans to, to be It's fine. To be I know how it goes. And I've actually never been in here before, so I've been enjoying this really beautiful space. Um, yeah, so I'm Sarah. I, oh, sorry. I'm Sarah. I work for the White River Valley Consortium Managing the Working Communities Challenge Program. I think we sent out the brochure to you all in advance. So yep. I don't know whether you'd prefer me to give you the rundown from the start or whether you don't want me to do that if you had a chance to look at the brochure. I, I would say, you know, if you can give us a high level yeah. recap. 
Yeah, so the Working Communities Challenge is, the short version is it's a grant and technical assistance program that the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston hosts in individual New England states in partnership with entities from that state. So they have a Vermont steering committee, a lot of Vermont funders who's funding their pooling, and they ran this opportunity for communities in Vermont. Um, it's a two-phase process, which I'll touch on again in a second, but essentially there was a planning grant that the White River Valley Consortium has been in since 2019, and as of the start of this year, we have received an implementation grant. Mm -hmm. So the Working Communities Challenge opportunity actually um, encourages, it's designed for, and for smaller communities even requires towns to band together to reach a certain population threshold in order to participate in this program. So back in 2018 or 2019, when the, when the uh, opportunity for applying for the planning phase first came out, it was actually Joshua Jerome from the town of Randolph and Rebecca Sanborn Stone from here in Bethel who took the lead in inviting all of the neighboring towns to join with them for this opportunity. So really Bethel is one of the founding members of the White River Valley Consortium and its sense has grown to include 14 towns mm -hmm. essentially centered around um, Randolph and Bethel, and there was that map in the brochure that I sent around. So during the planning phase, um, a number of uh, organizations that serve this area, community members, community volunteers, um, spent a long time discussing together what is this, what issue did we want to work on together for the implementation phase. It's a really flexible grant program. It's meant to help communities work on whatever issue they identify as most important for increasing economic opportunity for all residents of their communities. So over the course of the planning phase, the White River Valley Consortium ended up selecting the topic of housing that's affordable for entry-level workforce and beginning entrepreneurs. So as we all know, there's a huge housing crunch in this area, and that specific population was really where we felt like there could be a value add. There's already a lot of entities who are doing really great work around affordable housing or senior housing, and we saw a really, real need as a consortium to work on housing that's accessible and affordable for young people, people early in their careers. Mm -hmm. So that's the idea with which the consortium applied to the implementation phase, and we were awarded this three-year grant that started at the beginning of this year. Again, it's a really flexible program, so I don't yet even have for you a, a target. Like we, We're not saying yet, mm -hmm. like we're creating X many numbers of houses, and we're not even saying we're definitely working on X, Y, or Z strategy like zoning. We have the time to work together to collectively decide what do we want to do to address ho housing for that uh, segment of our populations. So we're really in the early phases of, we've been, um, so I, I was, I'm speaking in first person because I live in Royalton and I was a volunteer community organizer member of the consortium during the planning phase. And then with the start of the implementation grant, I've been hired as the coordinator for this effort. So we've been really like getting all of our ducks in a row in terms of logistics, processes, outreach. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're at this phase where we're ready to, we want to start engaging directly with the governments of the 14 towns we're serving as we go through this process of figuring out what projects we want to work on around housing for young people and people early in their careers. Is Two Rivers a part of the, so then you're aware of the seven of us towns that are working on zoning bylaw changes and yep. updates to in, for making housing easier. Yeah, yeah, they are a core team member, and Sarah Rate is on our, we call it a core team, but it's essentially a steering committee for the consortium. Okay, great. So we're deeply in the loop with that work as well. That's, yeah, that's great. And we're probably not going to, as a consortium, we're probably not going to be looking at zoning because that effort is already going on, so we're looking at complementary solutions, other solutions to that. We've been trying, we have a couple properties, um, one in particular that was housing units that had a fire and that hasn't been redeveloped. And, mm -hmm. you know, I had reached out to Two Rivers at some point. I haven't heard back yet, but looking for, you know, a contra uh, a developer to mm -hmm. put them into contact with the owners who that I've had contact with to say, mm -hmm. hey, you know, here's this property that they are really needing to unload to, you know, for some housing. And, yeah. and uh, so, for me, it would be nice to try to figure out how to make certain connections for Bethel to with yeah. to bring you know developers into Bethel that want to mm -hmm. you know do some to do some housing like that. Yeah, that's a big piece of this work. Um, you know, I'm not a housing expert. I'm here to help people meet each other and network with each other. Right. So a big piece of the value add that the consortium brings is making those connections. Um, and that you know that's a need we're hearing across the White River Valley too. So. 
while we haven't decided our big projects yet for this grant, we are planning sort of learning, already starting to plan learning opportunities for the community. So there's networking events like this one for the representatives of the municipal governments. We're also talking to a medium scale developer in Fairley about organize, so we'll be organizing a field trip to this nine apartment building unit in Fairley that will be open to everyone in the White River Valley who wants to come learn from that. So really sort of like trying to arrange that sort of con connect connectivity and learning opportunities for these 14 communities that we're serving. Nice. I know here in, here in Bethel we don't have a lot of, well we don't have a lot of, we don't have any green space or mm -hmm. areas to make our footprint larger. But what we do have is we do have a lot of existing structures that could be mm -hmm. rehabilitated into um, housing um well like Teresa was saying and our, our biggest thing is like who do we who's that connection point that we put like a to b to be able to make something happen because mm -hmm. we do have buildings that have kind of just faltered or stayed in a certain stage yeah um that you know that we do have good opportunities and you know we have uh, consistently a lot of uh individuals that come in to take part at the schools mm -hmm. and work at schools and gw plastics that you know housing has been one Housing and daycare have mm -hmm. been like the two big, big um, drivers of yeah. people coming and not coming. Um, mm -hmm. They kind of go hand in hand. You yeah, know, and uh, childcare was actually gonna have the childcare mm -hmm. with that, but um, yeah. In the planning phase, childcare was one of the other finalists for what we were thinking about applying sure. for this with. But um, one so, one of the reasons we did is because we were interested in seeing how the model that GMDC is working on in Randolph will turn out. Exactly. Yeah, that's what so I we're kind of we figure we would wait and exactly. let them uh, let them run that yeah. as a pilot and then see. Isn't it Green Mountain Economic Development? Is that who's doing it? Yeah, yes. it's like eighty child, they get right on Slack Hill. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. and that's so great. and G GMDC is a core is a member of the core team for the consortium oh, as well. So well, it sounds like you have a wonderful group of so everybody in the know. What do you What are you specifically looking Yeah, so um, so we are just big picture, like I mentioned, we are starting the process of exploring what work the consortium should even take on over these next two and a half years together. And we want the town governments to be partners in that, and certainly to be involved in the conversation. Not that we're going to be expecting you all to take on loads of work, that's what the consortium is for, but partners in the decision making, inform like informing the decisions about what the real needs are. So we really are just at the point where we want to start building an ongoing relationship with the select boards of each of the towns. And the really specific granular request is that this June 30th event, which will be hosted here, mm -hmm. um, is really the first opportunity um, to bring representatives of all of the select boards together. So the staff from the Federal Reserve Bank will be um, presenting more about what this Working Communities Challenge even is. We really wanted to give time for the select boards to directly talk with the Federal Reserve Bank staff and really understand what this program really is. Um, it'll be an opportunity to meet the other members of the White River Valley Consortium. So I'm the staff person for it, but we have 10 folks on the steering committee and then many other volunteers as well, but the steering committee members will mostly be, attend uh, be attending. Mm -hmm. um, and then really, so, so the agenda will be intros from the, the rest of the White River Valley Consortium an opportunity to hear directly about the program and ask questions of the Federal Reserve Bank staff. And then the last segment of the agenda will be breakout groups for the uh, representatives from the towns to start talking with each other. I've been hearing a lot of common threads across the communities, which is one of the reasons that we should be working together on this. So it's really a first opportunity to start comparing notes on what are the specific challenges in Bethel. Well, in Bethel, there's not that much space for new development, but it's buildings that you would like to see reused, sort of comparing notes and starting to um, hear what hear what each other are thinking about doing. And then from there, we would then have other opportunities to work with you as well. So, and that's why that's on the next, the agenda item is right, to pick so some specific, up. so the, that's basically a one meeting thing and then see what grows out of it. Yeah, so we have other ideas already for how we might want to work with you afterwards. Um, for example, we are getting ready to launch a robust public engagement, community outreach, information gathering process. So certainly we'll, we will be talking to Bethel residents anyway. And if you wanted to be an active partner on that outreach process, we would love that. Um, if you were interested in um, hearing, uh, like it, if you were interested in helping, having us help you organize more direct public engagement specifically of your community, 
like a walking tour of some of the sites in town that you think could be potential housing. We have the staff capacity and the partners who could help organize that sort of um, outreach event specific for you. So that type of thing, but, but deciding exactly which of those items we want to do would come after this June 30th meeting. Got, gotten this implementation grant, but what is, I know you don't know this yet, but what is the sort of driver of where that money is going to be used? Yeah, so, so a lot of the funding does go for operations during the three years, so staffing, not just for myself, but um, there's other, we like we have a, a grant writer who has some time um, on this project so that we can go after even more funding, um, communication staffing. Uh, meeting expenses, logistics. We have a significant pot of funding to compensate participation from anyone who's not otherwise being compensated. So community organizers who want to help with the outreach, um, underrepresented folks who, who we want to be able to compensate their time for participating in this process. Then there are also a, a few, there are a few, a few pots of funding um, that we can apply for pilot projects or for technical assistance. Um, so where we're at in the process is we have, we're nowhere near deciding exactly what to work on, but we want it to sort of narrow the field a little bit because there's so many different things we could work on around housing. So I've been keeping a running list of pretty much every idea that's been suggested. So what could this group work on around housing? It's like 30 plus lines in an Excel spreadsheet. We did have a subset of uh, volunteers in the consortium start working their way through that. Really we were thinking of it as not what are we gonna work on, but what are the most promising things to look into more about to understand whether we're going to work on them or not. So we started a conversation about what are the most promising strategies for creating more units? What are the most promising strategies for um, creating systems change to make it easier to make more units in the future? What are the most promising strategies for increasing ex equity and who can access those units? And then also what are the strategies that we wouldn't necessarily even say they're promising, they're more just intriguing and we just don't know enough about them to even know whether they're promising or not, so we should do more research. So we did go through that process and got it down to a list of about eight strategies. We're not saying we have to pick from those eight, but it's a starting point for us doing more research. So that sort of act, one track of activity that's happening concurrently with us starting to work with the town governments concurrently with this community outreach process to hear from the community what types of housing do we even want and what types of solutions would people be interested in helping to implement. And then um, after we've done sort of that due diligence and information gathering, that's when those pieces of information would come back together to allow us to actually decide what we should work on for years in two and three of the grant program. So the actual, the goal is then that you actually will implement some, so there could actually be housing built or is this really just a plan and then maybe qualify for more grant money to actually do the housing later? Or do you think that in years two and three you actually may implement a project and actually build some more housing? I, th I think it's somewhere in between. I mean, housing does take a while to build, so it's yeah. unlikely that there will be significant numbers of units. Mm -hmm. However, some of the solutions we're considering are things like um, helping towns figure out how to use revolving loan funds to support housing that would be a solution where maybe that could make a difference in more units existing during this grant phase, even without additional funding being secured. Mm -hmm. Just to throw out an example. So yeah. somewhere in between, like we're not likely to get enough, get significant funding and build a large, build a large number of units within two and a half years, but some of the small changes might see real impact within this without additional funding. Okay, excellent, thank you. I think I think the big, biggest hurdle I've heard is I've really not heard a lot about funding. Yeah. And I don't know if anybody has been watching, but uh, current uh, loan rates on homes is up over five percent now. Mm -hmm. And also, while I was on the school board, our this area, which includes Bethel, Rochester, Stockbridge, Hank, uh, who else is in our group? Anyway, we have more than 55% of our children are qualified for free and reduced yeah. income. So that, that tells, tells me that we, the group that needs housing cannot afford to go out and borrow three hundred and fifty yeah. dollars to $400,000 at 5% interest. So someone's got to get on the horse and say, 
All right, somebody, I don't know who that person is, is gonna figure out a way to get, to do what you want, many, many hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. available at a very low rate. So that, that right there is a job that you and your group can't even do. It takes more people than that. For sure, yeah, I mean, we are looking at, uh, well, one of the things we will definitely be doing, regardless of what the big projects we take on are, are figuring, are helping our communities take advantage of the recent housing legislation that's been passed. And I know that that's a drop in the bucket in terms of what's needed, but that's a good example of there are more, re there are new and more resources, and it can be really hard for our small communities to understand and access those resources. So we're certainly going to be helping the 14 towns access those resources that do exist or that have been newly created. And um, we are also, you know, they're working with banks and figuring out if there's changes to their lending practice. I mean, I, obviously not interest rates, but there's, like, I, I really am hesitant to even say this because I'm definitely not a banker, so yeah. I'm, not, I'm probably going to do something wrong. <laughs> but yeah, some but things, things like how the loan-to-value ratio is created exactly. for creating an accessory dwelling unit, like tweaks like that. There's innovative things happening in other places where it's not necessarily our group finding more money, but figuring out what are the systems that are greasing the wheels a little bit in other places. And then also, frankly, I mean, this area, we certainly need more funding available for low-income families, but we also just need more housing, period. And there's, there's, there's not enough of it. Um, and it sounds like, for the most part, it's putting a plan together and then connecting the pieces of, so we have the plan, and now who do we get to bring in to be the developer mm -hmm. to develop this, you know, mm -hmm. uh, make it up in Bethel. Let's say if we looked at three different properties that had, you know, the highest likely ability of doing something with, and then, mm -hmm. and then you're helping behind the scenes to like connect the people yep. and connect any type of funding that may be out there yeah. for those people to develop these properties. That's yeah, like help, yeah, helping right? helping you all make the connections, yeah. helping you understand what resources are available. Um, I don't know if this example would be applicable in Bethel, but uh, one example we have talked about is if there's places that are a really promising site for more housing development and don't have any water or septic currently. Um, there's models of collaboratively owned but not municipal water and septic. So we're looking at potentially a project to support a couple of different sites across the White River Valley, essentially group, group purchasing, helping them to get the grant funding to group purchase um, feasibility study planning for that sort of collaborative water and septic, which might actually make a, a real housing site more possible and we would be there to help walk through the process and also have the values of the, the benefits of doing it as a group. It'd so. be nice too, just attracting a developer too, because you know once they build it, they will have the tenants. It's mm -hmm. a, you know, I know there was yeah. a conversation I had with someone who had built in, on some other units in Massachusetts and felt that you know they would be the type that they were kind of, that they could go up quickly, that they could. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing is enticing people in a way to develop because they will get the tenants. The tenants are here. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Uh, right. but, yeah. Or they will come. You or know, they will I mean, come. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be all multi-unit either. I mean, one of the no. one of the most promising strategies mm -hmm. we're looking at is are there ways we can support creation of accessory dwelling units? So adding in-law apartments onto existing houses. And sure. one of the, I mean, that's quick, quick it's still not super quick, but no, it's certainly but it quicker is, than right. multi-unit apartment buildings. One of the other things that really interested about us about it is the potential to then also help that homeowner stay in their home if it's hard for them to stay in their home and afford to stay in it. Could that be a benefit to that homeowner as well? Um, so things like that, um, we, we'll be doing a lot of research into a lot of different models around how to support ADU creation, but some of that might be helping tap the new state funding stream. Some of it might be um, tweaking financing mechanisms or looking at financing mechanisms that already exist like revolving loan funds. Some of it might be um, finding grant money to cover technical assistance to help homeowners create those units. Um, some of it might be partnership, like helping create partnerships. Like if there's a partnership with an employer who needs housing for their employees and there's a person who would be interested in adding an apartment but is nervous about being a landlord and having to find tenants, could we help support the creation of a partnership 
where they've got guaranteed tenants who are backed by the employer, and then the employer has housing for their workforce. So helping think through all of those solutions um, and figure out, you know, like on one level, we're looking at what makes sense for the region, because a lot of what I'm hearing across the towns is the same town to town. And then also realizing that each town has its own differences as well. So helping look at solutions that benefit the whole Right River Valley and also helping each town understand its own um, challenges and opportunities better individually as well. So it's certainly not like let's all come together as a White River Valley to pick one spot in the valley where we're right. going to build a large apartment <laughs> building. We want to so, help Bethel meet its needs. Yeah, it sounds great. So. so not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but we do have an action item for after the public comment. I mean, do we, while we're on the topic now, do, do we want to come have up with Have you decided that? on the time yet? Okay. Yes, I think we're, um, I, know I will right. double check my notes, but I believe we're so we're having food and networking starting at 6.30 and then an agenda from 7 to 8. Okay. Maybe 8.15. I haven't so we, do we check. have a member from the board that would like to represent one or two or whatever? Who, yeah. who can't have more than two. <laughs> Not right. <laughs> we'll have to warn a meeting. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I cannot be there. I have another meeting, so I'm not I'm, yeah. out of town that week. I'm available. I can go if nobody this else wants to. June 30th. June 30th. Thursday, June 30th. Well, I say that. I'm available now. I don't know. My daughter's just got this, like, they're getting out of school, and they're like, hey, I got this basketball camp, softball camp. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, every night now is full of yeah. basketball and softball. For <laughs> exactly. Summer. But I say that I'm available. I have that. this question for other towns. So just to be clear, whoever whoever comes to June 30th doesn't. You're not on the hook. I'm not. You're not signing up to be the point person for this yeah. effort for the next two and a half years. <laughs> really, we just want the, to make sure every town has someone who can talk yeah. directly with the Federal Reserve Bank. So I mean, I can go if anybody else wants to take my spot. There can. If not, I can do it. Or or I mean, two of us can go. Right. Did you want to go, Paul? Or no. I love it. So we just so Gene and I. Does that sound good, Gene? So Gene and I will. Okay, I'll great. Perfect. That's great. Will, will you be recording it so that? Uh, um, probably not. Well, we but, can we can give you a, a yeah. synopsis, you know, after the next meeting there. Well, I was gonna say we probably won't record the whole thing, but I could try and at least record the Federal Reserve Bank presentation on what the program is. If that might, might be helpful to report. I, I would say if, if you could have it available for Gene and I to pick up, yeah. or after the fact, maybe email it or something, if, if you do have a hard copy of the presentation or something like that, yeah. that we can get back so that all the board members can read through that. That yeah, would be helpful. Yeah, definitely. Um, or, or, you know, or a packet that you can print off. Or yeah, are they going to do a PowerPoint? Do you know? The Bank of Boston, are they going to do a PowerPoint? I think so, yeah. I can yeah. make sure all of that's available. Or, or you, yeah, just send it. If you, if you find out later, then you can always send that to me, even after the fact, and I can make sure that it goes into the packets for the select board. Do okay. you have Teresa's yeah. information? Yeah, yeah. So that, yeah, that would probably be the best way, is get Teresa yeah. any of the copies of Okay, the great. And as of July yeah. 1, I'll have um, office space at the Arnold Block, so it'll be really easy for me oh, to get materials over here. Do so. yeah. you have a printer there? Oh, thank you. You can print all of us. Yeah. 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 It costs a lot to do color copies. Yeah. That's right. I won't be running. The, I won't be running color copies off on their printer. I'll just mean it'll be easy for the me to keep the stuff there for whenever it meets, works to meet up. Yeah. Good. Well, so. thank you so much. Well, we appreciate you coming the, in. And sorry for the delay. It's fine. At least we were able to get you right in. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Because yeah. this came about what Wednesday or Thursday, yeah. and so. I was like, yeah, I think we could probably make it happen this week. Yeah. But, so. So. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you all. Really Next time we'll flip-flop you with the um, Cemetery yeah, yeah, Commission. Yeah, exactly. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, gets, yeah, this gets is, a little this rowdy in here sometimes. It's, um, yeah, it was nice being in here and nice meeting you all. I'm looking forward to working with Bethel yeah. on this. So. Take care. It was nice to meet you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good evening. Thanks, yeah. you too. All right. And we, we will open it up for public comment. Um, there is nobody currently here in person. So Please. if anybody has anything, Christy so or Lenny, and Lenny um, now's the time. <laughs> well, OK. Um, I think um, we're going to Pride Fest is happening in 10 days. It begins. Um, I think I asked Owen to make sure you got packets. Did you get packets or did one of you? Did you get a packet about Pride yeah. Fest? 
Yeah, last time in the okay. prior select board meeting, you meant it. Yeah, they got everything okay. last time. Two, so I just two, want, go ahead. Two weeks ago. Yeah, okay. So it's it's running, it's off, it's happening. Um, just want to update you on a few things about Pride Fest. One, we have, I've, I've been organizing this and we have lots of volunteers from the town, from the town's people. So this is a community event. It's not just us putting on this event. This is me putting on this event. This is a community event. Um, lots of things are happening. All except for one of the events out of the five are for all ages. Only Saturday night, the burlesque show and drag show, that is for 18 and up only. All the other events are free of charge, by donation only, and they are for all ages. So there's a prom, there's trivia, there is a movie on Sunday at the town hall, there's a prom at the white church, there's trivia at Babes. Um, uh, this is gonna be, uh, there is, they do, we're doing a queer, uh, a, sob a sobriety meeting that is strictly for queer people um, who are either sober or interested in becoming sober. And that's happening at the Arnold Block. Thank you very much for the people at Arnold Block for letting allowing us to use the space once again. Um, we have donations from Cockadoodle, from the Bethel Sandwich Shop. Everybody's on board, everybody's supporting this and they're in this. And I just want to make it clear that this is a, this is to celebrate each and every individual in this town and the neighboring towns where they are and how they identify. So everybody is welcome to these events. It's a positive, safe event. They're all going to be safe, positive events where people support each other, where the community comes together and the surrounding communities come in and we support people no matter where they are. Queer, bi, straight, this doesn't matter where you are. You're coming to support one another, to take pride in who, in who you are, that your town is that diverse and that we support each other. So that's really what this is about. So everybody is welcome. And we've gotten a lot of youth to do a lot of things. We have a youth for the prom. There's going to be a youth doing the DJing. There's going to be a youth doing the photography, a student doing the photography. Um, the idea for the prom came from the young people. So all this is what they wanted to see at this event. So a lot of this is surrounding them is to bring the youth to this town and to promote the youth in this town. And I just want everybody to know that again, everybody is welcome to this. Every single person is welcome. As long as you come positive and safe and ready to enjoy, everybody is welcome. So that's where we are and it's happening. So, and it's in good shape. You are, you're, you're in tonight. You are yeah. <laughs> so, thank you. So, and I hope to see you all at one of the events. Uh, come to the movie. Um, come to trivia. Uh, anything. Just, just show up. I mean, your presence would be really great. The town would love to see you there. Um, and not just as a select board member, but as a person, as an individual who takes care of this town, who supports this town, who support the people of this town. It would be great to see some of you there at, at one of the events. If you need more information, I can send it. I can send some more detailed information about each event, if you would like. I can send it to you, Therese, if you would like. I'm losing you a little bit. Um, she has posters that you sent on the bulletin board. Well, thank you. But if there's anything additional you want, you know, just email it to me and I can send it to the select board, Kelly, whatever. Okay. And most of the events are people are people are going to be in attendance. They've notified us that they are attending. So the more the merrier. That's how we feel about it. Okay. Christy, you have anything to add? I dropped the direct link to uh, the Pride Info event site from the Bethel Equity website. It's in the chat for anybody who wants to grab it out of the chat. Um, and honestly, this, I just, I'm excited. I wrote down, come positive, come safe, and ready to enjoy. Like, Leonard, those words 
Heck yeah. Um, I wrote that down. Um, and for me, I just want to say thank you um, to Leonard and everyone that's collaborated on this. Um, this is the first town that I've been a taxpayer of that has made such an effort to make sure that I felt included. So I just want to put that on the record. So thank you. It's good to see everyone, by the way, too. After the ladies left. I think that it, a much more unsightly scene at these cemeteries is especially the one toward Randolph. That's Fairview, right? You go into the older section of that cemetery, and a third of the stones are broken and tipped over and look like shit. I know. And I would, I'd, I'd tell you, if you want to put some money into fixing things up, let's fix the headstones. Cecil had approached me and said that he heard from someone else that there was money out there. So I wrote to um, my contact, Caitlin Corkins at the Vermont Historical Preservation, and Caitlin sent me to another organization. And they do have some grant money, um, but I'm not sure if it's just like $500 or what, but for stone cleaning. And I talked to the conservation, or the conservation, the cemetery commissioner in Brantree because they had a stone cleaner come in and um, I got their information for Cecil and then uh, that I was gonna talk to him um, to see if he, you know, about moving forward with the grant to see who would repair the stones if we got the money. But, and, I, and if it's only like 500 with a 500 match, it's $1,000, but I don't know how much it even costs to repair stones. So, but you're right, and it is a concern that Cecil, that Cecil has had is, you know, is about the stones and those, it's, you know, cemeteries, unfortunately, I mean, it will all eventually, it falls to the towns to, you know, right now we do the mowing and stuff, but it may be a situation where we need to, um, you know, add more money to the cemetery budget to, you know, deal with I, some of these I, things. I but. really had to bite my tongue, because I wanted to ask the lady if she had any idea how my great, great, great grandfather, who's in the first part of the cemetery that died in 1839, how they would trace them to me. Because mm. his last name is Wallace. There you go. And, that was and, I'm, and that's, only, that's only the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> they, these, these ladies, I, I appreciate their, their hurt. Yes, or of whatever, course. But do they know how many people that aren't, you know, that, that my father, my grandfather, my cousin, blah, 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 great. But there are people in those cemeteries that their relatives have long since gone away. Mm -hmm. And and they don't they don't come back. No, and the thing is, too, is, of course, these these uh, ladies are, are great. They, you know, it's unfortunately, they're the exception. There's so many people. I have a whole, several filing cabinets covered with artificial flowers. And I have not heard from any of those people to come and get them. And so, that's the problem is these ladies take care and, and are, are wonderful, but it's the people, the masses that come up. And it, you know, you hate to say that, but it's that old adage, right? That one bad apple, you know, and unfortunately that's the, mm -hmm. the situation. And however, yeah, and you, I will say, I, 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 I should have put a notice in the paper. I'll send you a note to, when you have your conversation, get ready, I have a note for part of the policy. Yeah. Are you, um, you're gonna be here next, are you not going to be here? I hope to be here. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. I thought you were, like, planning a vacation. <laughs> you know, it's got plans. I can get run over. I saw. We'll put on the next agenda yeah. to accept it. Yeah. Having a different cemetery discussion. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so is this Wallace well, Farm? Is that family? Yeah. With him? Yeah. No. He already told me before the meeting, so. Well, they're cha I mean, cemeteries oh. are challenging, and yeah. there's a lot of okay. There's a lot not of care. Maybe we could. It's not this There's a lot of care, reason. but it's, you know, okay. finding the right person okay. and. Yeah. All right. You know, no, it's, it, it's, it's it's not. It's not a full time gig, you know. And it's not yeah. this. It's all, it's not this situation okay. that caused that. Yeah. Letter. Okay. So he, I just pay, found out we, about it today. We don't pay a lot of our uh, appointees anywhere near the, the amount of money that they uh, deserve. Their, their, their <laughs> jobs. Yeah. 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 And, uh, I, Gene used the I right mean, word. I, I expected yeah. this before now. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, me too. All right. Well, we'll see. move, move we'll forward. We'll close public comment. Uh, we already took care of the next uh, piece there. So, so Jean and Jean and I will uh, represent the board here on the 30th of June. <clears throat> And Therese will get any of the hard copies to the presentations to the board members. Um, and then we were just kind of just get back on the wagon here and talking about the town garage. Yeah, so what do there. I was telling Chris, uh, this poor gentleman pulled into our parking lot and I happened to be walking out to ask Kelly a question. And I see this car and it says Morton Buildings on the sign. I, I said, is there a person in that car? She said, I think so. I run out and start tapping on the glass. Poor guy was like, he goes, I thought you were going to tell me to get out of here. And I'm like, no. Um, so they're different. I thought they were the metal building, a metal building. For, they actually do wood. And, um, but it worked out. I said, see, you pulled into the right place because he gave me a brochure and a card. Mm -hmm. and, um, currently, we have had the furnace is checked out. It's good. We've got the oil furnace working. The electrical panel is will hold an addition. We got the ceiling fans replaced. We put in better lighting. The overhead doors are going to be going in. So we are doing some stuff to the existing building. I, <laughs> I know, it's, it's terrible, isn't it? You're never going to find I it, know. right? I, next time, we got, I got to move us back over there. It's my bad. Um, you, you give it an hour and 15 minutes, and it'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, they can see us. They can see Chris and I too, so thank you. Keep in mind, but thank you, Gilberto. They mm -hmm. um, so anyway, so I'm not sure what our next um, steps are regarding the garage because prices are so expensive right now. Um, I was when we talked about the architecture. Oh no, I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't see it. I would have. I was already <laughs> buying it. I was going to tape it. <laughs> Creating Conservation Commission. Just wanted to give him that tribute. Yeah, he's mm. he was a wonderful man. Thank you. Anything else for the good of the community? <laughs> there you go. Um, so, you know, with the prices right now, when we had talked to, done a more detailed RFP before, um, I had like a budget of 600000 and the engineers are like, you know, this is like a million dollars. And mm. we really are looking for an a standalone building to butt the, you know, not even touch our existing building and then reside them. And this gentleman said, well, you know, we could build, you could build the building and have it, you know, right next to everybody. He goes, we wouldn't be, he said, we wouldn't be able to metal side it to make it look like all one, but I said, does it necessarily have to? It could be an addition that we just reside the existing building. But so I, there's a part of me that wants to. There's a a a, a gentleman in up in Rutland that does metal buildings. Part of me just wants to talk to somebody, like no commitment, just get this gentleman over here to. Is this even possible? what yeah. we're thinking and then can you do you know every, people are saying like metal buildings are metal buildings you don't need this necessarily need this mm -hmm. to be all engineered and this and that this could just be a metal building that obviously one building opens into the other building um and then you know we resize because we already know from the structural engineer that you can't attach to the existing building but he said obviously you could reside it and make it look like one large building so part of me just wants to talk to somebody in just the metal building business mm -hmm. to see, hey, oh. you know, how, is this possible? What do you do? What have you done? And just to maybe try to get some more information um, because obviously uh, engineering, it is, you know, is going to be extremely expensive. Whereas maybe we don't need it if for someone to come in and just build a metal building, but maybe I'm way off course. I, I just kind of wanted some, I think it doesn't hurt to. There's not a lot of companies on the bridge here, but there are certain ones that one. No one up in Randolph. We could find out who did that building, where the the memorial places. 
Um, oh, with days, right? Or yeah. Days, uh, um, Green Mountain Memorial. Yeah, whatever. Green Mountain yeah. Memorial. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it doesn't hurt to get a couple of different opinions no. at this point. And I think the challenge is, like, I mean, if we were to hit the Powerball, I would like to have, yeah. <laughs> I, I would like to have Chelsea's, you know, that new yeah. building that they put up in Chelsea a few years ago. Like I a, mean, that's like perfect. Like, and it, it was it's over. got the right square footage and stuff. I don't know if it'd fit completely on a property, but yeah. most of it would. Um, I mean, that would be really nice. And that was over a million. It was about a million dollars. Four I think. years ago? Yeah. Oh. Um, well, no, another source, Bethel Mills, uh, the folks upstairs at Bethel Mills. Okay. have contacts all over the place. Yeah. Yep. Might be able to come up with some names. But I think what we're getting at, and, and Dave hit, hit on it a little while ago, is yes, the building materials are expensive, but what is going to get even more expensive is the financing portion. Of it. Mm -hmm. So, sure. yeah. you know, paying, I'll make it up, paying 20% more for materials is going to mm -hmm. be nothing compared to paying two or three percentage rates over 25, 30 years to yep. pay for a building, right? right so. yep. That's where it's gonna get really expensive fast. I mean, you can mm -hmm. almost say, we'll pay an extra couple hundred thousand dollars more to build it mm -hmm. with lower interest rates, because the interest rates is where it's really gonna get expensive. Yeah, yep. um, yeah. And I'm um, sorry, so I just kind of wanted to, mm -hmm. you know, obviously yeah, I, I think about I'd it kick on, it around. on a regular I, I think, basis. And, I just, I can feel like somebody who just, this is what they do. And obviously we know it needs yeah. to be insulated. It needs to hit certain, obviously energy codes. It needs mm -hmm. to be, you know, but we did, we are taking other steps to make sure that it's, <clears throat> that once we, you know, that the existing infrastructure in our building, like we don't have to move the bathroom. We don't have to move, you know, trying to keep things. You know, I know we have to move the water line, but. Uh, but we know where it is now, and we got our septic fixed and emptied last year, so we know that we've rehabbed that. So we've kind of slowly removing some of the surprises that we weren't sure what we were going to find. If we were going to find a septic tank or a VW bug down there holding, you know, we didn't know what we had. So we've located these things. Mm -hmm. But all right, well, thank you. That's that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Then I can uh, gives me some uh, direction. So thank yeah. you. I appreciate that. That was really all I was looking for. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, we go. And what else you got here? Oh, American Rescue Plan money. I don't think I had anything. I haven't really had any anything Not, different. No um, new ideas have been <coughs> funneled in, but yeah, Kelly's working on getting a call. Members' salary, three hundred percent. There, you go. <laughs> with through ARPA. Uh, nothing is what through ARPA money. <laughs> <laughs> through ARPA money. So I did. Uh, Kelly is working on getting, or she did get an estimate on the website redesign, but. I, I, it just seemed extreme. I, I was really, I wrote to the people back and I'm like, no, mm -hmm. this is not all of a sudden you want to charge us 5,000 a year for the next several years. I'm like, no, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm not looking for a big redesign here. Like we all, a bunch of municipalities got the same website, the same, we're just looking for you to tweak this, make it a little more user friendly and um, certainly a little more accessible and, and ask for some input there. So I, you know, I've been sitting on a number of about five grand, but mm -hmm. they came up with something nuts, and I'm like, nah. you just asked. We're Kelly not. just asked one. Well, one she entity. asked the people who do it now because they already host it. They're the yeah. ones who've done a majority of the towns, and because through the Snelling Center there was a big grant, and so we thought we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. We just want them to do a few things to our existing website. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure how clear they were. Do you know what I mean? Like all the, so we're gonna. Yeah, and I guess try. what I was going with that is like, is it worth, just in in regards to sort of next steps, instead of just balking at one number, getting some additional quotes or reaching out to other folks? And so, part of it is like, so clearly we have a domain host, mm -hmm. but is it? Would it be more like I'm just kind of yeah. spitballing ideas, but like, would it be more cost effective to hire? to have the town hire a part-time person who's responsible for the website specifically yeah. and budgeting that in would be less expensive in the long run yeah. than, you know, so it's maybe 10 hours a month of their time right. to, to do those updates and to, you know, kind of keep it up and running, but also make it a little bit more accessible. And mm -hmm. would, could that solution be a potentially more cost effective than I don't know, because I mean, right say, now we have to change it all the time. Everybody's mm -hmm. kicking out agendas and minutes every week. So right. like Kelly doesn't mind the you know, maintenance and stuff. There's just some issues that we would that we would like to address. Like there's a big bar, like the photo that if we 
move that, if we could move the menu and kind of do some things. She's done some research with other websites that mm -hmm. she feels like that would really work better for Bethel and be a little more efficient for people to find things quicker. Right. And, and um, but anyways, I just thought it was, I'm just not sure we were getting the answers to the questions that right. we wanted. But yeah, so we may end up having to do something more. But anyway, so that was it is still, I'm still trying to, is we do, you know, that is still on the list is redesigning the website as with the use of some ARPA money. And I have mm -hmm. not yet had time to write the RFP for the pumps and the generators. So I know Richard's going to- But I would say that, you know, right now, just kind of the way things are in the world and it's, you know, you know, this, inflation thing is going to be here for a while. So it's, um, you know, probably our best bang for our buck is to do things as quick as we can, um, for one, for cost-wise, and two, you know, lead times for certain things are going to be long, right? So yeah, sure. pumps are probably going to take months, oh, you yeah, know, no to kidding. get um, where costs are going to start going up, right? I mean, you got to think if everybody, if all these municipalities start spending money on pumps and things and, you know, <laughs> yeah. You know, exactly. demand and yeah. costs and right. lead times and things. So, you know, no. however we can I get it. come yeah. to the conclusion on how we want to spend that money, no. of which, you know, yeah. some of it we've already kind of concluded of what we want to do, but yeah. we do still have that pot of I just money need to there. get the RFP um, out. And honestly, right now I've just been focused on audit prep, but we do. But once I get the RFP yeah. out, then we'll have an idea. And at least I have some, I, that shouldn't be too, too terrible because I have some I know what I need to bid for because the engineer already looked at it. So mm -hmm. I know like the make, the model, the this, the that. So, sure. um, but yeah, so we definitely will probably have to spend that money before September, um, which is fine. We, yeah. we said and, that. And I would, yeah. Yeah, I, we're gonna have to. Um, it's gotta. But anyways, so that's it. So no updates on American Rescue Plan. I had a, uh, an email from Senator Wall. Oh yeah. Asking, asking whether or not There's everybody else's. <laughs> well, but, but in, yeah, and there, so they were, he was asking about that. I'm not uh, sure because it can't be used for. Um, well, it just has to be an existing has, but, municipal but it, was, function, and, right? Right, but we don't have anything to do with the library. Sure. The library is a private entity. I yeah. wonder if they could get. But we do some, appropriate money there a year, right? Like we would for services, well, right? Yeah. Wondering if that'll yeah, for we have already, services, it would have. We already appropriate money there, so is that a normal town function? You know. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm it would have to be, um, but I think it's about. not very much money. But um, so it would have to be some way like. Well, we that. just increased it to what five thousand the last two years. Right. Well, exactly. Last, this budget in. The yeah. one that will start in July. Right. So yeah, and so I would have to look at the fine print. The, 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 the request I'll add it to the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a good one though. I'll add it and to the list. For that. And I also yeah. uh, suggested in my reply uh, that is it an immediate issue or is it a long term, term more budgeted type thing? And is it is it something that needs to go to the budget or is it something that to be need to upgrade the, the social service, social service yeah. budget. Yeah. All of those kinds of alternatives. Yeah. Uh, There's also money out there for libraries, depending on you know the grants and that sort of thing. So um, they should also reach out to um, you know. There's obviously the state library association, but I'll put on the list. anyway. I just but yeah. Thank you. <coughs> that contained a link to the cannabis regulation training. When you guys, you should watch that. And I tried to watch it on June 9th, but I was on yeah. the road and I don't yeah. know if it was just, the link didn't work or if it was just my connectivity wasn't correct, but I wasn't able to watch it. So I'll yeah. have to try, so, try yeah. again, but. That's, yeah, so I did send you guys the new link. Mm -hmm. um, I already told you about the transfer station. I did, uh, with Rita's help, submitted our grant application for upgrading the new sidewalks from the Giffords to the school. It's a $530,000 project. Um, 
then the pool opens Tuesday, July 5th. So that's exciting news. Um, I'm telling you that I'm going to be taking a training and some days off. Uh, our audit is scheduled and I uh, spoke to Diane Placey and 69 Church Street was sold to another interesting party. Uh, interesting party, good news is we'll bring a small business to town. Uh, last time I spoke to Pam, there was still not a property transfer tax return on file. So i um, not really feeling like I'm at liberty to say publicly who the buyer is, but um, I called Diane, I'd sent her a letter telling her she had contacted me after I thought they were gonna come by, she mm -hmm. didn't, and then I sent her a note saying I was gonna be gone, I'd call her when I got back, and then when I called her, she's like, oh, we sold it. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm like, well, I hope you got what you needed from it. And uh, so anyway, so they, they've been cleaning up the property. Yeah, yeah. They've been hauling a lot of stuff out of there. So well, Jen is done. She told me, Bartleman, she said, that she's done cleaning up. So I'm not sure if oh, the new buyer is going to finish the cleaning or what. But I, last yeah, time yeah. I knew the money hadn't exchanged hands yet. Yeah. So with our small, whatever it is, a little over 10 to nine acres. Yeah. Out front. Yeah. Is it worth us keeping if the a business identity goes in there or is that something to talk with the business identity well, maybe wanting to see if they want yeah to he did ask purchase the, that or he asked about it you know what we were doing i said right now i wasn't really sure and um i just said obviously we mow it and maintain it mm -hmm. and, and be good we're good neighbors and he he laughed and i don't know if he may be down the road depending he'll be in, he would be interested in purchasing it but he certainly um just didn't know if it made was, sense uh, you know i mean if you're gonna have a business front yeah. there we have a little sliver of your yeah property right. is it worth us even owning at that point or yeah. not or? i don't know so we'll see once he gets going maybe but he did ask i just said you know for right now um just you know letting you know what i know and doing some research on the property these are some things i know i just wanted to share that information with you and he was like, oh, thanks. And so um, gave him some names of people who could do cleanup and remove trailers and, and uh, this and that. So um, I guess we'll wait and see. Perfect. I have looked at that space and often thought that that's a possible source for additional parking that is near downtown. And people use it. We park there for. Um, Mr. Wright's funeral, yeah. Mr. Foes or Fulverton, yeah. Mills' funeral. And I think people well, I guess know you could, people well, know Gene it's saying as, you know, down the road you could develop it as a curb cut. You could, like a little parking you lot. could push the curb back, you know, whatever, 10 feet, and you could have diagonal parking and probably, I don't know. You could probably look into yeah. whatever, yeah. You yeah. could probably put, I don't know, make it up. Not necessarily worth just giving it up. Yeah. You could right. make, you know, you probably have six to 10 parking spots there, you know. And especially if there's going to be a business there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, good just thought. a thought. No, it's a good thought. Good, yeah. good thought. Oh. A what? what? With, electric with electric charging stations. With electric charging stations. There you go. Absolutely. So, yeah, I think so. I think everybody should have an electric car. We should all drive electric cars. No. Spoken like a true electrician. Because if they all had electric cars, a great crash. You wouldn't have lights on. Well, at least you're the electrician. You'd be able to figure out yours. Yeah, you're yeah. Just all the rest of us are in trouble. The rest of us. Yeah. Why is Dave the only one driving around? <laughs> 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 I saw one that's coming on the market that's a solar powered car. Wow. Every person oh, yeah. would ever have to plug it in. I remember, I remember, um, speaking of solar power, yeah. I was in high school and we went, they had a solar power event. I don't want to date myself because I'm a pretty young guy, but this was in the 90s. And the event was in Dartmouth at the Green in Dartmouth, and they had solar power cars. I mean, so that's how long this is, you know. And that, this was like big technology. It was all a solar power car that I think it was like a one seater, you know. Well, this is two um, <laughs> But I mean, they've. I mean, whatever. I mean, I'm not that old of a guy, but that was 30 years ago that <laughs> that power. that was going on, you know. That's funny. So, all right, uh, select board meeting minutes from the 23rd of May. Does anybody have any amendments to it, or are we good to approve the minutes as written? I didn't see anything on there. Okay, all in favor? I did have a question. Did, um, did James catch up 
with you in regards to the banner or the banner costs yep. or mm -hmm. yep and i i, I said, saw him when i drove by and had i had a little bit more time i would have stopped and asked him but no, myself no. but he was good he um i put him in contact with penny and kelly and just said told penny this is the amount that the select board approved if you if um since james was working on partnerships if you wanted to put more money in it and put their name on it, also sponsored by <clears throat> Spalding Press. They could work it out with them, but send us the bill. This is the max we're willing that we can do, and Kelly and, okay. and we're gonna work together. So, nice. They, yeah, he's Yeah, I, awesome. I, when I was driving by, I saw him, and I was like, oh, I wonder if he got <clears throat> He did, he's all I didn't set. see a banner, so I said, I wonder no, if he's... No, he called me and Good said, do I need to talk to you about this Saturday? I'm like, nope, <clears throat> I'm like, just deal with Penny. It's that gotcha. easy? I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> 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 like, you. I'm with the wording, you got like, we're good. We'll see Penny. Yeah, he was yes. like, thank you so much, yeah. He, he was awesome. Yeah. Very nice man. Good, good, good. Other communications. And there were a slew of other communications in there. Mm -hmm. Rec committee. Letter of intent. Planning the, commission. The roads grant. I saw, and uh, we did have uh, two volunteer spotlights in there. I think everybody probably has seen them by now, but. Bev and Ellie. Um, I had a couple of, uh, maybe I don't have questions anymore. I look into the budget. I think I talked to you, but. That's fine. Got me. It's fine. Um, yes. No. So the fire department still has some things that yes. they <laughs> haven't bought yet that they yep. need to buy. Yep. The fire chief was in today and he had. They had ordered a trailer like six months ago and it just came in. Okay. So that's gonna be another $7,000 bill. He had um, <clears throat> the, because they have the like motor, 20... something that goes to their jaws of life yeah. isn't that they were got a lender, they finally got a situation to get that fixed. They have some other stuff. They Gary has a list to order. So they're aware. I usually email them in May and say, gentlemen, start spending. Well, I was gonna say he's got like, Yep. You know, probably 80% of the money he has allotted, he hasn't spent yeah. for that those items. No, you know, and they, so. what happens is they like to wait till closer to the end of the fiscal year mm -hmm. because if they ever had a major breakdown um, with an apparatus, Something they know it's going to kill yeah. their whole budget. So they try to be, and they know they don't have much money in their capital apparatus budget. So mm -hmm. Dave and Gary are always super conservative about that. Well, at least they have one now. Yeah, it's true. Now Years ago, we one. didn't have any of those. It was so, like, so they. What um, do we do? I don't know. Yeah, so he was in today telling me about some stuff that, that they had ordered that was finally coming in. And they also had to have their rescue fixed. So that bill will be coming in. And so some things were. But it looked pretty good. You know, like I was talking with you, yeah. it, you know, looked like budget was coming in ahead. Um, and, and I, well, I wrote so things, in some notes so that you knew, like, pretty good. some bonuses were, or not bonuses, some bills were coming in, of course, mm -hmm. like stormwater catch basins yep. and, um, you know, things like that, that we would, that we would see. Um, I did also talk to, I'm working with Green Backer right now because um, the BRTS currently gets some of our money from our net metering. So I did reach out to them today to ask them where we could allocate that money mm -hmm. so that the net metering obviously stops going to the transfer station July 1 and comes to us. Gotcha. Um, maybe that'll take down town hall. So there's some stuff in there. Obviously, let, you know, don't lose sight of the fact that we were 30,000 total in the hole when we started the year because of retirement. Sure. So um, sewer water budgets are gonna be a little wonky. We were not planning on, um, Obviously, doing um, making the payout to Tim um, in, in the, it, this in this year in this time frame. So um, you know that's mm -hmm. that will be a little bit wonky right there. But um, other than that, yeah, I was just working on audit prep, so made some notes for you guys. Sure. General fund looks like page eight. Mm -hmm. You say there is for the long-term debt for the town hall. You say one more payment due. Is that due in the fiscal year, or is that one more payment? Oh, due in the fiscal year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. I should have thought about the no. wording. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there'll, be, there'll be more one more payments on yeah. top of it. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was, I, I'll be a couple well, more. I was hopeful. Yeah. <laughs> no. You know what? I don't have a copy of the time. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't yeah. think anything yeah. was coming up like we'll that. Get but like another. 
I can't. 15, I was just gonna say, if you look at your town report, there's a list of your there's a list of the long term obligations. Yeah, I just, don't know. One more this fiscal. I'm sorry. I didn't no, that's that. that's fine. I was <laughs> uh, wishful thinking. I didn't. Yeah. That. <laughs> it's not but like I that. Should, I don't yeah. know. That was. That's right. You know, I'm I'm thinking this as I'm doing it to myself. But well, when was it? Two thousand what? Six or seven when they did this? What it was? Um, I thought it was 2000, but was, was it yeah, earlier I was than closer to 2000. I think so. Because they were um, doing all the fundraising and everything in the 90s. So then it when I came in 2006, two, they yeah. were still doing work to this building. So I don't know. It was 2000. Yeah. So it's yeah. 2000, anyway. 2040. Yeah. yeah. We're still paying Sorry. for it. Mm. Yeah. Yes. And, um, I was trying to count backwards to the loan amount. <laughs> Trying to work well, on that in my head now. Crack open your town report and you'll yeah. see the mm -hmm. you'll see the balance and the term. Right. Uh, so unless scary. we have anything else come before the board, we are gonna buzz into executive session quickly to talk about um, a town employee merit increase. Um, and that will be it. So I I got a little small thing to add to that. In the executive session? Yeah. About okay. personnel? Personnel. Okay. Okay. Do you need Teresa in that or no? Yeah, I'd like her to be here. Okay. So we'll have Teresa in for part of it and Teresa not in there for the other part of it? I mean, it's really quick. It's Unless quick, it matters. It's really quick, but I don't want it on camera. Okay, okay, that's fine. So Dave is moving to go into executive session to discuss personnel matters. Yeah. Paul second. seconded it. Second. All in favor? Paul, you second. Yeah. Aye. He beat you. He beat you. <laughs> <laughs> <It's fine. laughs>